uh, get things going at the Town of Exeter Historic District Commission. Today is Thursday, October 21st, 2021, and it is 7 o'clock. And we are going to get things started with the first, oh, I'm sorry, I should introduce ourselves. Um, we have on the board tonight, Grayson. Uh, what's your last name? Shepard. <laughs> Shepard. I knew it was an S. <laughs> he's, he's the new guy. You can tell by his name tag. Um, Grayson Shepard, uh, Julie Gilman, a select board rep, myself, Patrick Gordon as chair, and Gwen English, our planning board rep. Um, so the first is the continued public hearing on the application of Barbara Shaw for the changes to the existing structure located at 163 Water Street, Unit 4A, and this is for window replacement. Uh, the subject property is located in the Waterfront Commercial Zoning District, and it is case number 21-8 for us. Uh, so please yeah, step up to the mic and oh, okay. introduce yourself. That's the only way that all our viewers at home oh, get, get recorded. Or well, get thank you. you. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'm pitch hitting tonight for Barbara. She's out of town. Uh, she had to travel. Um, and an update on this project. Um, they have narrowed down the windows to a wood frame with an aluminum clad. They're not going with the vinyl anymore. Okay. They've, uh, they've contacted Portland Glass, and the brand is a Harvey window. And I actually have, uh, can I pass out these uh, spec sheets? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They may help you. This, this cool okay. Thank you. Bob has been working with uh, Dana Harding uh, from Portland Glass, and he was uh, trying to get a mock-up for tonight, but he's having trouble with supplies, and uh, he says he can guarantee a mock-up, a mock-up, mock I'm sorry, uh, by November 2nd. He feels that the, the, the parts will be in uh, by that date. Okay. And um, so this is a, uh, a wood frame, aluminum clad uh, exterior with dark bronze. And um, it, um, it will match any window that's currently on the building. Um, and I, I think there's been some discussion on changing all the windows to match on the back. So it'll be, you know, it'll be the same window uh, as many as 36 windows. That's 36 is yeah. the, would end up being the total. Yeah, that's the uh, uh, the one. The existing windows are really in bad shape. There, there's uh, the frames are cracked. They're leaking. Um, people are putting up plastic to protect their interior of their condos. So this is an urgent um, problem when it comes to the. Um, ability to seal cold rain or any other type of weather weather situation uh, i just moved here two weeks ago <laughs> and they welcome just throw you, throw you to yeah the and they say okay um i was in the ski club once and someone i asked someone what does the vice president do mm -hmm. they were trying to nominate people and then someone raised my hand for me <laughs> and, and so I, that, that's what happened this time i said well what what is this commission like? And they, they said, okay, Charlie, they were signed. <laughs> I'm, re I'm a retired engineer from Raytheon Company. Uh, I retired five years ago. And I worked at Raytheon uh, 47 years. And uh, so my background is, is uh, mechanical and electrical. And uh, so I, I enjoy present presenting this information tonight. And uh, Barbara is very, um, she's done a lot of work. They've gone through Marvin, Peller, and Anderson to, to um, um, select this window. And they think this window um, is, it's wood. It, it's a wood frame. Uh -huh. And it, it's, uh, it's a very good product. Uh, what, what Barbara wants to do is to reschedule uh, for November 2nd, 
or any, any date near there to, to complete this process. Um, Portland Glass will definitely have the markup at that point. Um, and we did get the, uh, the bid finally came in. So this, um, this process is just about finished now. Is that bid for all of the windows, the whole project? Yeah, yeah. I, I think the discussion is that, that the windows are, the, the current windows are deteriorating. Mm -hmm. So it, it, rather than do a piecemeal, they, they want to have the condo association work to complete the whole windows. We just had the front of the building painted, and all, all the windows there are, are all wood. And uh, so the front of the building and the side of the building was just painted uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And they just want to make sure that the, everything is um, uniform. This is, yeah, just for so the quantity of seven. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, but that's still a discussion as far as completing the whole project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time sensitive too because of the weather. And that's something that's uh, could be an issue, but Barbara has done a lot, of, a lot of uh, research and worked with uh, Dana, Dana Harding, and they feel that they have a good product now. Okay. <clears throat> um, is there any other information to present? Uh, no. Tonight. Okay. And the request is to table this at least until November second. We set. We schedule. Okay. For your next next nearest meeting on in November second, yeah. Yeah, That's our what, our next meeting is the third the third Thursday in oh, November. Is that uh, is that the third? Or? We would. Yeah. Uh, what, what is no, the, the date? Third, I think it's the sixteenth. Yeah, I'm just looking here. So that'll, that'll give her plenty of time then. The eighteenth. The eighteenth. The eighteenth is the next our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, that that would be. Um, if you could schedule that, that would be great. She may be asking for it sooner than that because she was making that request last time. Yeah. yeah. She was here. So um, maybe just ask her to email us if, if okay. the request is before our next regular meeting because okay. we then have to coordinate it so we can yeah. get our ducks in I order. appreciate that, that advice. Um, <laughs> and then I, I would just reiterate to her also that for that next meeting to reread through our meeting minutes from the last time okay. and bring all the requested things that we had asked for. Okay. Do you want me to bullet those again? I'm sorry? Do you want me to give you that list again? I have it right here. Okay. Yeah, I'm all set. And is your name Charlie? My name is Charles Ebert. E-B-E-R-T. Okay. In the last meeting, um, one of the things that I recommended was looking into refurbishment as opposed to replacement. Yeah, but Baba did mention that. Yeah, and I sent her a list of uh, firms that I've worked with. I wanted to yeah. make sure everybody got that. Do you know if she had received any quotes from them? Uh, I think she was working on that, too, in parallel. Um, okay. She didn't give me any information for this meeting, but... Um, I, I'll, t I'll take that note again. I didn't. What is, what is your name? Julie Gilman. Julie, okay. Oh, thank you so much. I will uh, send her an email tonight on that okay. request. On the information you provided for us uh, in the, on the windows, it doesn't say anything about the. Um, the cladding on the exterior. Do you know if it's a if it's a roll form aluminum or if it's extruded aluminum? Um, I believe it's ex extruded. I, okay. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to make a a good guess, but I think uh, I actually haven't seen the material yet. Okay. I was hoping to see it by tonight, but um, I'll I'll work. I can. Uh, what were those two questions again? You extruded and what was the other one? Uh, roll form. Roll form, okay. Yeah. Roll form's a thinner yeah. material 
it uh, folds at the corners yeah. typically or miters as opposed to being extruded has more structure to it yeah i, I will um, i will contact the dana tomorrow okay and uh, i'll get back to you as soon as i can before the meeting Did, did they happen to give you any information about the reduction of the daylight opening with the insert window no. that they're proposing? No. Okay. The um, the name of the window is called Majesty. Okay. And, and um, so I, I went online and I looked at the window and I, I, I did some more investigating and it's really a, um, it's a very solid window. All right, um, I guess I would call for a motion to table this application then, that being the request, unless there's any other information or comments that we want. Uh, shall we table it to a time to be determined in case the applicant wants to meet earlier than next month? Sure, yeah. Okay. You make the motion as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to be sure everybody was okay with maybe meeting earlier. So Yeah, um, I mean, if we can, we can. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, I move to table this application number, uh, HDC number 21-8, uh, to a date to be determined for our November meeting okay. on the 18th of November. All right. Okay, great. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So tabled until then. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting to know Exeter. <laughs> <laughs> really, well, really more than you want. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, Charlie. It's your turn. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I was, I was in the Navy, and uh, we, um, when they asked for a volunteer, mm. we had a line of people, and we knew that 10 of us would just step backwards <laughs> and someone would be out there <laughs> thinking that they they automatically were the volunteers. Well, we usually volunteer someone in those empty seats. Uh, <laughs> well, someday maybe I'll be on the right, Well, there you go. Yeah, right. Thank you. Well, welcome Thank you. to Exeter. All right. All right, next under public hearings, we have the application of Frank Sabin for the proposed installation of a wooden fence on the property located at 129 High Street. Subject property located in the R2 single family zoning district and it is case number 21-9 for us. Representative here for that. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi. My name is Minnie Sabine, and this is my husband, Frank Sabine. I'm sorry. I oh, it's okay. Pronounced that incorrectly. It's okay. Uh, yes, we live at 129 High Street, um, and we are here uh, requesting your approval on a fence on our property. Um, we have recently adopted a golden retriever puppy, and we're hoping to uh, provide it with a little area in the back to roam. Um, you received uh, information on the uh, area that the fence would be taking up in the back of the house. Um, and uh, it's, it's not covering our entire property. It would just be focused on um, the back of the of the house um, with a slight uh, part of the fence um, being um, seen from the from high street um, is that what the green is on the map uh, green 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 actually that's that's the back of the fence that's facing the what we call the backyard um, the the yard oh I see yep furthest away from High Street. And the 38 foot section would be uh, the part that may be seen from High Street. We also have a line of trees on High Street that um, um, cover and screen that screen, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I like to Google Google Maps. <laughs> and you can see there's just trees all around it. Wow. I know. <laughs> Believe me, I know I know the area. Yeah. And it's, I think okay. it's just so you're looking at a solid uh, fence like okay. that's shown here with the okay. pool. I'm scared. <laughs> the board screen. A, a solid fence? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Solid fence on the on the uh, park facing High Street, as well on, as well as on the side um, uh, perpendicular to our um, our the neighbors property, and, property. Yeah. and and then on the back it would be a picket fence with a gate. Gotcha. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's that's the reason for the two different styles. That are yes. Are yes. And that's the green. I get it. Mm -hmm. now. Or we wanted to make it more inviting for the uh, for the, no, sorry. Uh, to make it more inviting for the uh, for the neighbors. You know, it was the uh, the picket fence. You know, so it didn't feel like it was so uh, walled off. Well, then the puppy can look at him too. Right? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Little smell. And actually, on, on that note, in, in terms of the uh, the puppy, mm. yeah, certainly, uh, you know, there's the magic uh, fence that you're uh, familiar with, or yeah. you know, the uh, electric electric fence. Which we do have, you know, but it's ninety nine percent effective. And so for us, you know, that one percent possibility of him running out to a uh, high street, high street. Very busy is street. very concerning. Yeah. And so, you know, this is really just—it's not so much, uh, quite frankly, that we needed the fence. It was just a you know, precaution for. Yeah, uh, for yeah, uh, for Chauncey. Yeah, quite frankly, that should have been like. Uh, oh, we you know, should have put a picture. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Chauncey, Chauncey, Chauncey. We can uh, give a picture yeah, to the town been. clerk because uh, they do the top dog That's contest. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the what's the um, wood material that's being used? Is it cedar? It's a cedar. Okay. And is it intended to just be left to age? The weather. And naturally, just to, yes. to gray. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean it's identical to the other uh, uh, fences in the uh, area. Gotcha. And we've indicated that in terms of pictures. Okay. Well, thank you very much for a complete application, mm -hmm. and putting it all together. Uh, it's very helpful for us when there, all the information is there, and I certainly see plenty of information um, in there to accept the application as complete. Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. All right. We have a second. I'll second. Thank you, Glenn. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. So that just means we have the information to be able to make a, a regulatory decision tonight. Uh, any other addition, additional questions, comments, Grayson? Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm clear. The picketed fence is back here uh, where the green is, mm -hmm. and that's the back of the house? Yes, it Correct. is. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and what's the height of the? It's uh, six feet. Did I miss it somewhere? On the on the front side and on the side mm -hmm. um, where our neighbors are, yeah. it would be six feet. That should be tall enough. <laughs> and actually, you know, it's very sweet of the, uh, the neighbors. They they were willing to come, but you know, we said that we could you know, probably handle it uh, ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, go ahead. Any other I don't have questions, any, comments? I don't have any questions. All right. Um, I don't have any other dis additional questions or comments, so I think that we're in a position to be able to make a decision. Uh, may I have a motion for either acceptance or um, non-appropriateness? Uh, well, let me just say first that it is... Um an appropriate use of a fence on you know somebody's yard and um, it doesn't dominate the house itself so it really is an accessory that is typical and, and secondary to the house um, and as it um, if you keep your house gray <laughs> as, as it ages it will, it will come to match um, the also also it's it is pretty screened from the street um, so it's not uh, it's not going to look uh, you know, outstanding brand new construction and it's wood, which is what we prefer. So I think it is. Um, checks all the boxes. Yep, yeah, checks all the boxes. So I will move to approve this application as an appropriate uh, uh, use. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Glenn. So all in favor of approval? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. 
Thank, Thank you, you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck with the puppy. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. It's like having a baby. <laughs> it is. How old is it right now? Uh, five months old. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, they're a gift. They're wonderful. so much fun. Yeah. They are. <laughs> See, when an application is complete, it goes by very quickly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was easy. <laughs> uh, next is under other business that closes our public hearings for today is the approval of the minutes for September 23rd, 2021. Um, I did have a few comments, but I ended up giving my mi minutes to the first applicant because he hadn't seen them yet. Oh. So. Um, Do you want to? I, I let him go. Let him take them. There, I just had a few things that I can probably Here. remember okay. or find. Where am I? I need my pen too. Do I? <laughs> it's not um, that. <laughs> no, it was a, I had a red one. Uh -oh, I, was I didn't see marking that. Up with. It's on the floor anymore. Hmm. I I've got something on the first page, okay. uh, second paragraph. Doug asked if they were going to make the garage, I think he said the garage door wider, if I'm remembering that correctly. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh -oh. First page? Yeah, on the bottom paragraph. First page, the bottom paragraph. Oh, bottom, sorry. Second line. The garage door, gotcha. Yep. I'm looking for it now. Oh, you uh, you already found it. There you go. <laughs> go ahead. Why don't you go? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have talking about uh, Patrick. Uh, this is the third page. One, two, three, fourth paragraph. That middle paragraph, starting. Patrick said, "It would be good." For them to bring back an elevation that shows exactly which six windows and a total shot of the building because we were talking about uh, setting a precedent was is what how it should read. Yeah. Talking about setting setting a precedent, a precedent with, with this application or the, with this approval. <clears throat> uh, right. It's just this one here. Restoration. Oh, restoration work in. Oh, oh the uh, restoration uh, of work in wouldn't be right. Oh, just delete the little bit. The last, second last paragraph. Uh, second line, Julie said she had a couple of different refurbishment and restoration blank of workmen that she can send to Barbara. What page is that? Third, third, page. third page. Third page, second last paragraph, second line. Oh, there's, there's my name. <laughs> I would just change uh, a workman to companies. Okay. All right. Um. I think that's all I had, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Did you invite, did you? Well, we that didn't. Was just a question for Yeah, we to didn't give to you. nominate a vice chair. Okay. Because, uh. You we're uh, all here. They Curtis were. wasn't here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I and we, you know, we're not, we're not that kind of board that Good. <laughs> nominates them when they're not in the room. <laughs> so, we were waiting, but he's not here again tonight, so we'll have to table that again. Okay. But that was the only, the okay. only position. Well, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the meetings of September meeting minutes of September twenty third as amended. 
All right, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. So approved. Approved as amended. Okay. I have nothing else under other business other than asking Julie about the grant stuff. Uh, uh, there, yeah, anything? there was a, a Zoom conference on um, certified local government grants uh, last month or the month before. It was, the, it was the Friday after our meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And really, all they, if I'm very familiar with the grant process because I've done it so many times, but um, they're changing, they're extending actually the process. So um, when we put in a letter of intent for what we might want to do with some grant funding, there's actually going to be a longer time. Like you know, we put that in in January. They ch change it from it used to be October, and now they've changed it to January. Um, and then the time it takes from the letter of intent for you to do the full application is like another three months. And then we'll get a response in a couple of months. They're taking more time, and uh, I think there are so many more certified local governments than when we joined mm. <laughs> that uh, it's more competitive and they need more time to really review the projects that are presented. So really that's all the meeting was about. It wasn't a change in, in the application itself or anything like that. It was just a okay. uh, timing, scheduling. So it used to be in October. Yeah. It's now in January, so they've backed it up nine yeah. months? Uh, or they, they moved, moved it, forward. it forward. They moved it forward. How was that giving us more time? <laughs> <laughs> well, we would have had to have a letter of intent in this month, but now we don't have to do it until January. Oh. So our budget's coming up now, and we still have time to decide um, if we need to. We have a few months, <laughs> two months, uh, to decide if we want to add anything more for the budget, if we want to talk about something specific. <laughs> Right now we have some matching funds budgeted, so it would depend on what kind of project we want to do, mm -hmm. whether it's more survey or... Um, I know we've uh, kind of moved this around between different departments, um, the Heritage Commission sometimes, and yep. HTC. Well, we've, we've missed the last couple of years because of missing deadlines. Okay. So. Well, we should do it this year then. Uh, what? what's on the table for us to do? Well, there's three levels of uh, uh, grants that the, that are provided. This is money that comes from the Department of the Interior to Park Services and then to the State um, oh, wait, we, Division of Historical Services. That's right, we talked resources. about this a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there are three levels. Uh, one is survey, which means it just uh, we hire a, a historical project planner who goes and investigates the uh, defined district or area that we might want to know more information about. And the Heritage Commission many, many years ago did a mapping project that um, is on our website under the Heritage Commission that shows how Exeter grew and the information that we got for that came from the historical maps that we were able to find. Um, and so the Heritage Commission has been surveying different parts of the town. Uh, we've done the Franklin Street area, um, Park Street area, I know we did another area, and then we have already have the two, uh, the Front Street and the Waterfront uh, historic districts have already been surveyed, although they, they do need up, updates, because <laughs> those were done in the 70s and the things have <laughs> changed. Um, so there's that level, which is actually free. Um, because they're, the state really wants everybody, all the towns to be surveyed for their historic, uh, for their history and any landmarks that we might find there or decide to make a landmark or add to the register. Um, the second level is project planning. So if we want to, um, like our new guidelines that we is that did. like the public education part? Public education, um, it might be for uh, planning to put something on the National Register or to do a historical building analysis, that kind of thing, has to have a match, and I forget if that's 30, 70, it must be 40, 60, I think they're all, but that one does have a, a match that we have to provide. 
And then the very last thing is an actual physical project. Right. And that is very difficult to get because uh, they really specialize in education and documentation. Um, and that there are other opportunities for for physical projects. So I haven't looked for that kind of thing. And I, you know, if there are suggestions from the committee, the commission for the restoration or some preservation of some thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be you know certainly welcome to hear it. Um, I can tell you a couple of things that are happening. Uh, at the town hall, the energy committee has uh, gone forward with uh, or seeking um, pricing for insulating the attic because the building is pretty much just open. <laughs> and so that'll make a big difference in, in how much you might enjoy the building. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so we're still getting pricing for that, but that's just totally a, um, a budget item as opposed to a grant. Gotcha. Um, if we want to do something physical, like if you think there's a building that needs attention or part of a building within a historic district or even outside, um, <laughs> where was I going with that? Um, oh, uh, LCHIP grants are probably more... Right, you said there's a lot more funds in that. Yeah. Um, you, there was a thought last time of doing the history of Exeter or updating that, the uh, updating the Codex slideshow of that. I don't remember that. <laughs> um, at the Historic, Historical Society. In the last meeting, Pam oh. said that one already existed. Yes, on, on the, the, the ring all slides, yeah. <laughs> the slide projector. Yeah, and it was, mm. so there was a thought of updating that in some way. There is that, and um, and I had talked about doing um, using that maybe for uh, yes, what I talked about. Um, this would be the educational aspect. Doing a, um, I wish I had a sample. Uh, they're like just a a manual of different styles and different types of architecture, different periods of architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, the New Hampshire Preservation Alliance, which would probably give us like a thousand dollars towards this kind of project. Um, ha actually has that provided and so you can look at you know what's Italianate, what's Victorian, what's Greek Revival, and what's colonial, federal, all those different styles and what's missing in them is that they're kind of generic and what I would like to see is one that is Exeter. Here's our example of the Queen Anne style in Exeter. Here's our example of you know with the uh, high-end Italian, which I don't think we have, uh, Victorian, and the and then the the um, what they call Carpenter's Italian or Carpenter's Victorian, which is uh, simpler but still has some of the like the brackets around the uh, the eaves. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about this as a book? Yeah, sort of like our guidelines, maybe not as extensive. Hmm. Or as a book, book. Well, in the end, yeah. <laughs> that would be neat. But yeah. It would be neat to, as a, as a commission, author a book about the styles of architecture. Sure, because people do time. come here specifically to see the architecture. They right. know we're known yeah. for that. So that would well, be interesting. And this, this now reminds me of a previous year's idea mm -hmm. that we had about updating the walking tour, right? Mm -hmm. The historic yes. walking tour. Yes. I have asked uh, a few times for a discussion with the society. The historic society? Yeah. Because they do have, they have a couple of different walking tours, but they are very old and they're paper. Mm -hmm. We've talked about doing a um, GPS... Uh, like geocaching? Not geocaching, but, but um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the location. Uh, by location, yeah. If you, if you, you know, marking the buildings on the, on the map. GPS location and having a little blurb come up with an app, an app for your phone. Yeah. Have a blurb come up about this building. You know, have a question. Why is that one? You know, why why is that one nice? Why is it that one on there? You may not be able to answer that question. But um, and I did have a contact mm -hmm. of somebody that did it as a grad student, mm -hmm. as a, a project for actually the um, Independence Museum to do that with their. Um, 
exhibits? Well, that, yeah, there's stuff <laughs> inside, but yeah, they're, they're exhibits, and, um, uh, but that hasn't come to fruition yet, so. Neither. I don't know what this would, could be applied to, but I'm, something just triggered a memory of the um, piece that Curtis sent us with the library in Kittery where they'd gone through and you could do like a walking tour online. You could oh, the three-dimensional model? Three-dimensional model. Yikes. Yeah. I know. I don't know what that would involve and I don't know what building or buildings it would be useful for, but I'm just just remembering that that was very impressive. And, but well, if we want to do that, I know, I know someone that can do that. <laughs> they can do that three-dimensional mapping. Yeah. They can do an entire building. It goes down to like the 16th of an inch, and yes. it mm -hmm. renders the entire thing in three it, dimensions. It's a Noli map. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is it incredibly expensive to do something like that? Probably, yeah. and especially like depending on the size of the building. <laughs> I mean, they, right, they, that's true a, too. A, if it's, a I think there's a company called Matterport that does that, um, and they, I think they, they would go in and they, they set up, um, you know, a tripod with a lidar, a lidar basically, uh, yeah. and it shoots a, you know, a billion lasers around and measures the distance to all of them uh, and okay. it's something like that um, that spins that does that and then I think you set it up in different locations and then you can basically like bring pull all those models together to okay. create one um, mm -hmm. I don't know what that you know what that as a service costs or if it's something that you purchase and then you do yourself I don't know hmm. well would that invite and well perhaps uh, prioritizing what we would want to do that with like do we do the town hall and the town office building or just the bandstand mm -hmm. or, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. You kind of need to do the bandstand, wouldn't you? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Smaller, and, you know, people... You see the mosaic on the floor and the nice uh, lighting and fixture in the top. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I think that that's kind of a nice smaller size, too. Mm -hmm. It's probably more scalable yeah. for um, the grant request. As opposed to, you know, ten thousand dollars to do <laughs> yeah. this building or something. I don't know what it costs. Mm. But with a grant match, is it cash match? Cash nope, match or gonna be in time in, in kind. Oh, um when when we did the um uh, guidelines, mm -hmm. a lot of the, almost all of the match was in kind and it, it includes things like um when we meet in this room. Um, there's a charge for meeting in this room. Oh. Um, there's the, unfortunately, federal minimum wage <laughs> for uh, our time taken to review and talk with the consultant and, and get the um, documentation ready. There's time that the um, town planner does for uh, grant administration. So there's several things that we can use in kind. Yeah. Um, when I was thinking of the... Um, the booklet of the different design styles in Exeter um, that would probably need a, that would definitely need a match uh, and then there's also the call for hey can we get volunteers to do some decent photography <laughs> you know yeah something yeah. like that when would we have to photograph when when would we have to come well well the best time to photograph is right before leaf out in the spring when the sun to is get, out and, and to get good pictures of the architecture yeah. and some of them we might want to just you know we might, there might be a good detail on something like the fan light but the rest of the building doesn't you know fan light over the door but the rest of the building isn't a great example of something mm -hmm. so it's kind of like our guidelines where they show different door types <coughs> right right but there you know there are things in the guidelines that aren't um, that aren't Exeter that aren't an Exeter but also um don't highlight what is an, a contributing resource to a to a building. Mm -hmm. Is there any mm -hmm. grand master list right now that the historical society has for um, all the different styles of architecture? I don't think so. They Probably. know a lot about the when and who of buildings in town, but I don't think they go into the architectural styles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
great idea, though. I, would, I mean, it would be fascinating just to be able to walk down Water Street and know when every every building was built. And that information is available. Mm-hmm. You just would have to go to the Historical Society and each look up each building individually. Yeah. I don't know how, how they have that in a database if, it, if it's electronic. I know Pam's got most of the buildings memorized. <laughs> but, 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 uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what their setup is. So if you're not walking to Pam, with Pam, yeah. <laughs> coffee, you can, that'd be kind uh. of something need to know I don't know I just love all the information about the old buildings when they were built all that all that stuff well what's nice about doing um, this kind of pamphlet we could even go to more to today's architecture because the the idea of well hopefully this would be renewed more than 50 years but <laughs> um, what's become a historic resource now is is counted as anything 50 years of, of age and that you know is now what in the 60s yeah. Yeah, in the mm-hmm. 60s. So there are areas of town that nobody considers historic because, you know, it's not like downtown or, you know, it's right. not like the Gilman Garrison. Um, but like J.D. Hill was built for a purpose of, you know, helping uh, affordable homes for GIs coming back from the war and have starting families. And that's that was in the 60s. And, or in the earlier. 60s? Yeah. And... Uh, so that's a you know that's another style that people don't think of ranch houses and uh, things like that. So we could get mm. into the more modern phase, mm-hmm. <laughs> Exeter's growth. Yeah. Oh. Cool. I like the idea. Um, so do we want to brainstorm and come up with an idea for our next meeting? Yeah, I think put. We've talked about a few things here. Um, make a list of your top three. I know Curtis was interested in architectural lighting for the town hall. But yeah. I don't think that's covered by an, an architectural lighting. Light. Architectural lighting. Oh, lighting. No. Oh. Town hall. Dramatic lighting of, of uh, like oh. on the Lincoln facade. Center. Yeah, on the facade to oh. really make sure everybody knows this is the center of town and this is our historic town hall. And, and and then you can get mm. it colored LEDs. You can yeah, it you know, green. For Christmas and thanks for yeah, the Christmas. UFO festival. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a couple of uh, political candidates that wanted to do that with uh, red, white, and blue, but we told them they couldn't like pierce the ground. <laughs> they they wanted to mount stuff up on the columns. No, uh-huh. no not so much. Not so much. Okay. Wow, well, good ideas. I like it. All right, so we have some homework. I'll send out an email to the whole yeah. commission and ask them and, and ask them to come with ideas or come mm-hmm. with a top three choice. Um, yeah. I guess we can all just kind of brainstorm. Yeah. Try to pick something next and meeting. I'll, yeah, and I'll, I'll write up the um, sequence of dates that we need. Okay, that would be great. For doing it. We've been fortunate in the, the Heritage Commission in doing their surveys. Um, uh, to just it was like all because it's free it, <laughs> because the state and the and the federal government wants everything to be documented so that there's one place that you can go to find out about your town yeah um, and and similarities between you know Exeter and maybe Berlin or some other place that uh, grew at it during mill mill period mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. all right Today is what? 1021. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I, ha- I don't have anything else. Um, so I guess we'll call for a motion to adjourn. So move. All right. All in favor. Yay. Yay. Hi. Hi. Well, All done. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. 
A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on Channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at exeternh.tv, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, exeternh.tv, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content as well.